a massive snowfall yesterday again. Another big dump. She's getting fairly heavy duty. You can see all the new snow about eight inches on that roof there. We've got now pretty close to four feet sitting there. Fire, firewood pile, you can see really how much from the top of the firewood pile up. I have uh, quite a bit more to come, but this gives you an idea of how much is happening. This is Kusta. So we're gonna talk about Kusta. And you just come by and eat big ball. You're a fantastic boy. You're a good boy. This is my big boy. This is my boy. Jay says you're a good boy. You're such a wonderful fella. You're such a wonderful boy. You're such a good boy. Jay says you're a good boy. Such a nice boy. Good boy. So Kusta, he's heading home right away. We'll come over this way a little bit, right? right. That's my boy. That's my boy. That's my boy. Jesus. You're a good boy. This is a Karoo and Willow son. Fifth generation pup forming in the yard. One of the oldest lineages known to exist. This boy. Yeah. Both sides. Old, 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 old lines. A phenomenal dog boy. Very, very personable, very handler focused. Nice fella. He's a nice boy. He has not a mean bone in his body. He's very, very nice. So he's going home right away here on Wednesday. Him and another guy are traveling. It's a magnificent dog. Now I have dogs exactly like this in there. Letta has her litter. Letter is genetically identical to Willow. There is slight little things of course but genetically she's identical and she's bred to Karoo. So more of these coming. Uh, very, very good. <laughs> you, are good you are a good boy. You are a good boy. You are such a good boy. Now I'm going to take a couple minutes. I want to touch on one thing only because I have a little bit of info that might help. And it's not related, it's not related to dogs. Way back, early, late 70s, I started working northern regions, of course. I've been working in the north my whole life. I've, been, I've worked everywhere, but oil and gas exploration, stuff like that. Now, I want to tell you a quick thing. The Texas boys, I worked down in Texas, ran jobs down there. I know the area, and, and I know those boys are suffering right now. And I want to just touch on a couple of points that that has maybe not uh, been in the frame of reference for a lot of people. But in the north here, and especially way up north, when we bring a camp in, the camps froze solid. And so we have to saw that, and this, I'm going back years and years, uh, you know, four decades, but the camp would come in and it would be pro solid. And we would have to get that furnace going. That was the, set the camp up and then get the furnace going. Now there's, uh, uh, the furnace itself has really three things that require some power. And the blower motor, obviously, the thermostat, obviously, and then you have a uh, relay switch and a thermal coupler that control the gas. And those, those are the three components on any furnace that require power. You can have gas in the line right to the house, right to the furnace really, but you can't use the gas because you cannot uh, start the furnace because you have no power on the furnace. The furnace itself requires power. And so every time we would uh, drop that camp in in the frozen north, we would, uh, we would first hook up the gas to the building, to the camp, to the, it's an ATCO trailer. We would hook the gas up to it, and then we would plug the, those three components into the generator, start the generator, and then we'd light the pilot light, and boom, the furnace would be on. So if, if you want a quick and dirty fix, if 
you have gas. Now, I'm not certain that all the homes these days in Texas have gas to the house, but if you have a gas line coming into the house, so if you're on a, a gas line and it comes to the house and your power's out, you, you've got no heat because your furnace can't, can't start, even though the gas is there. I'm not saying that there's going to be an electrician able to come and give you a hand, but in life or death situations, sometimes you can do things yourself too. But you could probably go down to the hardware store and buy a thermostat in a heartbeat, and you could just screw that on the wall right in the basement right by the furnace, and um, the, the electrical line that goes to the thermos and the electrical line for the thermal coupler and the furnace blower are all going to be right there and they're going into your box and wall you could literally take and put a plug on the end of them and plug them right into the generator sitting outside and a generator will run the will run the blower the thermal coupler the relay switch and the thermostat in a heartbeat just just a small generator doesn't need to be a big one now if uh if an electrician come by to do that, it might take him 20 minutes just to rewire those. He'll just cut that line and hell, you can fix it later. But just cut the line, put the plug on, screw the thermostat in, and boom, you got heat. If there's gas in the line. And uh, odds are high there's gas in the line. Now, we've I've done it for years. We've, we've, that's how we do it. But... Of course, ours are all wired, thermostat, thermal coupler, switch, blower, motor, all of that's right here. One line here plugs into the generator. This whole furnace is operational just with a simple generator. Of course, we got a gas line. Now, if the gas line is absolutely super cold out, and we were running primarily propane gas, not natural gas, yeah, same dip, but, you know, different power. Um, uh, idea is identical. Sometimes it's so cold that the, the, the gas won't flow, but at that temperature it'll flow. But if not, of course, in those days, we would just get another tank, get it working to a degree, and put the Tiger Torch right on this tank, heat this tank up, it would pressurize that line and push the gas in. This tank would just flow enough to to do it, eventually you could turn it back on itself, heat this tank up a bit, put it back, heat this tank, and so on. And you, you pressurize it. Now, gas needs to be compressed in those lines. They probably don't have enough compressor stations. Come on. Gusto? They probably don't have enough compressor stations. That's why their lines are cavitating. They probably don't have enough pressure in the line. Everybody's draining the lines and they haven't got enough compressors to, to keep the flow up. But if, if you've got gas coming to the house, and you'll know if you do, um, you'll see a unit, you'll know if you've got a gas furnace or not. And if you've got a gas fireplace, you know you got gas in the house. And if the gas is wired to your barbecue and you can light your barbecue, for a fact there's gas in the line. So if you can manage to, uh, I mean, there, there's a scenario. Now, in life or death situations, sometimes you have to be a little creative. And if your barbecue is sitting outside, is a gas barbecue, and it lights, well, just get a longer hose and move it inside. Open a window so you're not burning up all the oxygen in the building. Open the window and turn the barbecue on. I mean, how hard could it be, right? Sit in one room. Tape that room off if you want. Like, whatever you like. But the minute that you start burning open flame inside a building, you need to have oxygen coming in because you're going to burn all the oxygen off. So it's simpler to just start your furnace because that furnace will have a fresh air inlet and all the things designed and all of that is all built in. But at the end of the day, you got to survive. And... Uh, you got to do what you got to do. But just changing those three little plugins, boom, into a generator, a piece of cake. Now, if you haven't got a generator, somebody around you does. And one electrician can go down the whole street, fix everybody's furnace, 
uh, to plug into these things. And you can run the generator on this house for an hour, come over, warm the whole building up, come over here for an hour, warm it up, warm it up, warm it up. And you could just move that generator 24 7 all night long and keep everybody's house above freezing, put it that way. So, uh, in, in Canada, we normally set those circuits up automatically to do that. When we wire the furnace in, now in Texas, where it hasn't snowed since the 70s probably, um, they don't do that. But here, of course, if you got a natural gas furnace in, uh, in this region, anywhere in Canada, we don't have gas here because it's too remote. But uh, wherever, wherever I've lived before, where we had gas, of course, the furnace is wired to a separate box. That box is then ran into the main power grid, of course. But in any event of power shutouts, you can just take that, boom, put that to your generator, and your house is warm. So that, it's a very simple electrical change in the system. Um, most electricians in the north tell people that, but a lot don't. And for cheap homes, of course, they just, they don't do it. But anybody with a custom house, of course, those three things are already set up so that you can, and you usually have one circuit, um, a few circuits, maybe if you have, uh, um, you know, a couple circuits in the house that you need to have, so you would have one to your fridge and you'd have one outlet in the kitchen and perhaps maybe one or two lights. Uh, they're all run into that same emergency base of bank. Just what your generator can handle. And, hey, that's enough down there. Just enough what your generator can handle. And for anybody that's at all concerned, they should phone the electrician now and change those few things. They're not hard to do. And just have them set up so that in the event of a power outage, you just start the generator outside and boom, your, your house is running limited, but it's running. Rhea, Ark, Ark, Haru, don't do that, I'm talking. Ark. So that's just a tidbit I thought, well, I'll share it with my Texas buddies. Hopefully it helps somebody out. Um, there's, there's just no end to chaos in the world these days. And if there's a little pointer here or there that can help out, okay, so be it. Um, the, the main thing is you can't burn anything inside the house without having the windows open because you burn all the oxygen up and die of carbon monoxide. So don't, don't go that route unless you really know what you're doing. But uh, for the most part, getting an electrician to quickly change those three things, phone an electrical buddy, at the end of the day, if you're dying, do it yourself. Like, it's, it's three things that need to be plugged in. Like put, a, put a cord end on them and wire them and plug them in. Like, uh, it's not like you're going to blow anything up. It's just, it's the same 110 power. Just plug it in. So they don't run on any different power. And the furnace will start. You'll have the, the thermostat right here. So, I mean, it might get hot right here, but if you crank it high enough, it'll soon warm the rest of the house. So, listen to these guys. Hey, you guys. Rhea, T quit that. I'm talking. Come on, boy. Come by me. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come right up front. Uh, that's my boy. Jump up here. Uh, Jason's here, a magnificent boy. What a magnificent boy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, in Canada, of course, we plan for power outages, heat outages, all of those things. And so, almost all of us up here, the power, I've had 17 hour power outages, 17 hours, stuff like that. It's no big deal. Like, for us, for me, honest to God, the power could go out indefinite, wouldn't bother my life. I mean, it would make it a little uncomfortable, but 
um, it's not going to affect my life. If I run out of gas for the generator, that's a little, little more of a problem. But at the end of the day, um, if the generator quit at the end of the day, so be it. Um, you know, I, I can manage. Uh, the house was built to be able to withstand long-term power outages in the winter. And so it's not, uh, not a big deal for me. I, I understand what's involved and, and we planned all those things out. It could go out for three weeks here, wouldn't really affect my life. Um, obviously, we move cooking outside, all those things. I still eat with, with wood in a way and it's not going to be such a big deal. It won't be quite as warm. Um, I have blowers on the fireplaces, but at the same time, if the blower is none, there's plenty of radiant heat, so the house will be fine. Um, my water is flowing down at the creek. Hey, that's enough, you guys. Come on. As soon as he goes down there, they all get excited. Come on, boy. Come on, Kusha. You stay by me, boy. You stay by me. You're just bugging them girls down there. They think you're so handsome. You're such a handsome boy. Oh my goodness. So yeah, good boy. So this boy's heading home right away. He's all done his training. Training is good. He's a rock star. Beautiful fella. All his boosters are done. Rabies is done everything he's set he's world class this is one of the best dogs in the world this guy best genetics in the world too this is an amazing dog so yeah pretty spectacular well good luck to everybody that's having troubles right now no doubt about it it's a tough time